If I can have your attention, please. At this time, we'll call the meeting of the Cleveland County Board of Commission to order. This is a reconvened meeting on our January 14th meeting. And um, all the commissioners are present. And we're going to go right into the regular agenda. Our first agenda item is the Upper Cleveland Sports Complex. And we're going to do a public hearing. But if we could, we hear from Denise first. Associates 
and Terry, I'll give her a lot of credit. She can help me a lot. Uh, we put this application back together again to downsize it from our original application, which we asked for, I think, a year ago of a half million. And so she, see, she suggested, Lou and Brian, that we apply for the 200000 since we have the LC, the LCWF funds, the land conservation funds, um, which would match it, and there would be no obligation from the county to match the 200000 We could use that as our match. So with McGill and Associates' help, what we have done, you'll see that you know, on the map, the green, we are proposing uh, to the Part F people to apply for uh, the ball field and some other small amenity playground area and a walking trail in that area, which would equate and, and a drive down to that area and some parking, which would hopefully get us a, uh, a beginning up there. And we believe that if we can get some funding, more funding, we, we both actually raised about 100,000 now. And uh, if we can get this 200,000 along with the 200,000 from the land conservation, and we begin to get some ground moving up there and some types of facility that it would show that we are doing some things for the people up there and the children. So what I'm here tonight to do is to ask you and the board to vote on submitting this plan to the parks and recreation people in Raleigh. And uh, as we have our public hearing, if anybody wants to other board members are welcome to speak. Did she make this available in case you need Sure. This time, I'm going to declare a public hearing open. Anyone want to speak for the grant? <coughs> George Falls. I live at 218 East Stagecoach Trail. I've been working with this project for I know, probably three years since we started. I do feel like I know there's no industry in that upper end of the county. There's not a whole lot of money. We have to fight for whatever we get. So, you know, we do need this grant. I feel like if we can never get it started, get some grading, get something showing people in upper Cleveland County that we're going to do it and we're still fighting for it, that we can get some more money. I think people will start giving. They may not give millions like we, you know, we like to do in a lot of these places, but they can give $100, $200, and we can raise some more money. But we really need to get this started for the Cleveland County kids. They need it bad. They have nowhere to play. 
unless I drive all the way to Shelby. So we would appreciate anything that you could do.
guys are not mostly pitching in very well. At that time, that kind of was a brief overview of what has been done over the last number of years. But, uh, does anyone wish to make a motion that we allow the uh, prison sports complex uh, committee to move? budget 
uh, under the condition that the city first vote officially, which will this is your approval, your support, conditional on the city support, will allow us to launch a, a fundraising campaign. And so really, uh, your funding would be conditional on uh, the city's funding, and also just the, you know, it being doable, it being had enough funding to do the project. So uh, I don't want to talk too much, but does anybody have any questions? I mean, Monty probably can answer them. <coughs> I think what Carl has mentioned, uh, and I think you, you saw the paper a couple days ago, there was an article about the tremendous growth of senior population in our county in the next 20 years. I think right now there's emphasis on younger people. That's going to change. I think there's going to be emphasis on older people. Um, so I think there is a tremendous need. Anything you can do to help us, we appreciate it. Uh, it. It does need to be a private uh, public partnership because it can't be done by ourselves. If we can help, anything you can do to help. Commissioners, uh, any question? Uh, what I'm here is basically is uh, a couple things that we can do. Uh, do we want to enter into a partnership with the city of Cleveland Town Hall and what amount do we want to enter into for what term? That would be still in the discussion. Mr. Chairman, if I may, did you say the city of Kings Mountain has a commission at any time? Uh, well, basically, uh, I did a just recently did a, a you know, survey about 80 potential prospective contributors, including the Fort County and the city. And uh, the point of that was to find out whether it's going to be feasible to launch a fundraising campaign. And uh, and I asked, of course, the city early on that you know we need to support. I talked to the mayor, I talked to the city manager, city manager talked to the city council members. They are supportive. I feel confident from the from the information I get from both the mayor and the city council that the city will support the three hundred thousand. But you know, uh, unless we have the support from the county, uh, we can't move forward with the fundraising campaign. We don't want to uh, start something that we can't finish, we can't finish successfully. So that's the reason that we're asking for you know a conditional commitment from the county in order to be able to uh, move forward and. And before we would uh, expect anything binding from the city of the county, uh, we would ask it to be unconditioned that the city would officially vote to do this. But again, uh, we haven't asked them for a vote because we don't want to get funding and then find out we can't move forward. So that that answer your question. Yes, sir. I have a question. So it, it sounds to me like that that. Decision whether or not to do this hinges on whether or not the county is willing to do the yes, sir. thousand dollars. That's correct. Yes, if we don't, then the city or nobody else is going to do it. We can't. We just we can't. We won't have enough money to be able to, to pay the. You know, we we've uh, got it down to the you know uh, the construction, the you know, just the minimal amount of equipment. You know, which I think the county manager wanted to really look at the hard cost, and that's that's what we need from both the city, county, and the private sector to be able to. Fund the program. So three hundred thousand dollars <throat> or nothing is what you're looking at. Sure. Well, I mean, uh, we've got a very minimal amount of uh, furnishings and equipment. I was looking back at the, for example, in the library campaign, there was about twenty-two percent uh, furnishings and equipment in there, and uh, you know, typically the percentage is somewhere between <clears throat> twenty to twenty-five percent. We've trimmed it down below ten percent. So if if there was anything below three hundred thousand, it would be pretty much without any partial equipment. So it, it's it's been trimmed down to uh, to the you know to the minimal cost. So I mean it, it, it could probably be a little bit below that, but it's it's getting into cutting into the bone at, at that point. So <laughs> what what did your feasibility campaign show that you felt like was in reason that you could uh, somewhere between one point one and one point two million. Uh, probably realistically, we start out a, a goal that we feel like we can meet at a little bit over 1.1 million, basically like 1 million 110,000. And so, you know, that would be like say the that would be with uh, the construction, architect, engineers, a minimal amount of equipment, and that's it. No contingency, uh, no, no anything other than just the essential part of it. So that's your construction cost. 
Yes, sir. So you visually say what did it show that you felt like you could raise privately? Uh, somewhere between five and six hundred thousand. Just just had a uh, <clears throat> campaign uh, for the schools, as you said, as you, as you know. Uh, and, and you know, we did have. I mean, there was a strong support. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, the economy, as you all know, is is uh, softer than it has been in, in quite a while. But there is strong support in the private sector for that. Uh, it's just that some people, some smaller businesses, are struggling to survive. There's, I mean, there's some people that are doing great, and there's certainly a strong enough support from the private sector to uh, to do the project. But it's, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, it's going to be a challenge. But that's that's what we think is doable. That that's a, a realistic. Mr. Chair, and looking at what you're saying, you're saying you cut the bare minimum just to do it. Have you considered seeing what you really need for a 20 year period? Lord, the money and distributed this out over 20 years to the city and the county, and it wouldn't be as hard to come up with, a, with that money over that period of time. But you know, you, you say the city's in a crunch, you know, we're, we're in a pretty bad crunch ourselves, you know. And, uh, if you look at the city, some balance a little better than ours, percentage-wise, and I'm not trying to be negative, but I think that uh, feasibility, I know some of the other nonprofits is looking at the same thing about borrowing money so that it can extend their donation period over a larger period of time and not make it hard on everybody. That way the, the small guy can contribute <coughs> over four, five, six, maybe ten years. <coughs> Have you considered that? Well, I think the the city certainly consider it in terms of the, what they're going to get ready to borrow. Uh, so I think I'm talking about just this project alone. No, I know they're going to borrow it for the sewer lines and so forth. I'm, I'm talking about just on this project alone. I mean, I I, I, I know that in the past the, the senior center has always tried to you know do it on a pay as you go basis. I mean, and so I think the city's looking at it that they're. Going to be able to borrow as about as much as they, as they feel like they can borrow. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I, mean, I can't talk, I can't speak to the city, but my understanding is that they would prefer to raise the money. And of course, you know, they're essentially financing at least over three years because we're looking at three year pledges in order to, uh, and of course, they probably delay the construction for at least, you know, I mean, in terms of the planning stage and so forth. But I mean, as soon as the money comes in, they're my understanding is they're going to build a facility. I mean, that's the way it was done last time. So, uh, the reason I asked that was because of the one year in show, but that's what they've done on Nervous the last time. They went and bought his money and stripped it out over a 20 year period. Anybody want to speak to that? We have not looked at options. We'd be glad to look at that. <laughs> I think, you know, the, in the past, and this is true for, I guess, most of the Facilities in Kings Mountain have taken pretty much a conservative pro approach as a pay as you go if that's feasible. And again, the large amount that they are going to borrow, I think they're, uh, they're, they're, this isn't really the, the city's responsibility. I think they're, they're looking at this. And again, I can speak to them. We can always go back and ask for that. But I think the, uh, at least the preference would be to try to, to pay for this expansion. Uh, Pledges that would come in over a three year period as far as soon as possible. I guess just what I'm looking at is that if we make a decision uh, for any monetary uh, round to the project, that uh, it would be contingent on whether the city of King County uh, did things so that uh, they are able to uh, at least raise the fund, funding for it. So uh, uh, any vote.
follow up on what Commissioner Hutch has said, I think if you would look at the possibility of perhaps getting a five or six year loan, it certainly makes the situation for the county is more attractive than paying out fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year than it is, you know, paying out three hundred thousand a month like that's a pretty severe jolt to our budget right now. We don't whereas fifty thousand
not own the building. Yes, sir, absolutely. They operate the building. And I, I'm like you, Mr. Paul, I think before I would make a commitment of any money that it should be the responsibility of Kings Mountain to take the first steps. And like I say, I personally myself would like to explore the possibility of borrowing that money, stretching out over a long period of time because we've got some tough decisions to make in the next few months. And probably the whole citizens of Cleveland County, we're gonna we're gonna have to do something. And uh, you know, it's not in our <clears throat> forecast to raise taxes. We're going to have to make do with what we got. And it may only be $300,000 to use, but that's $300,000 to have of our employees in any way. So I, mean, I, I would make that statement before I committed to anything. I would like to see the lead agency step out first. I agree with Johnny on what he said, and I do want to make a statement that I did visit the Kings Mountain Senior Center, and I did see the needs for the expansion that they're looking for. They had a, a numerous amount of people there that were doing everything. They were very busy. It was, um, there were a lot of people in there. In every room, there was activities going on, um, from walking the halls to exercise to games to meals and things of that nature. But I have the same concerns that it, turned, and it sounds to me like it was a project that Kings Mountain led the way on and it's being presented tonight as though we're, we're the make a great deal on it. And I think that it would be important that Kings Mountain lead, lead it. And then whatever we can decide with the budget that we're dealing with and the fundings that are there, whether we're able to participate in it as well. But we need to see them lead the way. I mean, I understand, certainly understand what you're saying. It wasn't our intention to, to you know, put you on the spot that way. It's the timing-wise that, uh, you know, I'd say, did start out the city initiate the project, and uh, I feel it will be fully supportive, to, you know, this, that we're, but we are, I mean, you understand the, the funding, but I, I understand your position, too, and I, and I appreciate what you're saying, so. And, I'm not taking it, I don't think any of us are taking it in the negative. Negative situation at all. Right? So don't don't think that. We just like to better understand their participation and what's going on.
um, March 18, 2008, for a um, term of 10 years, uh, March 18, 2018. Um, part of that agreement uh, states here that um, the destination of Clinton County um, would be operating, obviously, the uh, scrub center that would, be, that would be operational within 60 months from the date of its lease, which would be March 18. 2013. Uh, as we heard in a um, previous presentation, um, that that is unlikely to happen. Uh, so at this point, uh, I think we need to, to discuss this um, with representatives from uh, Destination Clearing County as to what that um, date needs to be uh, so that we can, um, we can choose to, I guess, uh, approve the tenant uh, to the lease agreement so that we can put a recommendations for what we should put into this agreement, but uh, obviously at this point, you know, we need to do something prior to March 18th uh, to make sure that the, the, the lease agreement is, um, if they choose to be the final <coughs> lease agreement or not. Commissioner, would you like to hear a question or a detail before we address some of these points here? Just have to be six months, plus or minus a few days. We possibly might beat that a little bit because we have been doing a few things, but 
but we haven't found anybody, and that's strictly because of getting into the schedules. Uh, we haven't found anybody willing to say on record that they could do it in less than six months. But we think we can get within six months, plus or minus a few days, from the time we give the go-ahead, we think we can. And, and we do believe we need to do that pretty soon because if they were to fall into another large contract, then we could have a hard time getting into the schedule. But we think six months. JT, that six weeks until you hear it's long and then six months? Mm -hmm. From the time we give the order, we can't give the order until we can pay for it. Well, he, he's not, he's not, he's very non committal. <laughs> very non -committal. He said, uh, give me a date and I'll, I'll consider it. And at least, I, I think what is somewhat positive, it appears that this person may have enough leeway to make some decisions to say, he may not have to go, he may not have to get into the bureaucracy, in other words. He might be able to make this decision, which is, in my view, positive to be able to do that. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I, I'd like to commend JT and your team for uh, exploring other sources of financing. I know you were in a very difficult position, and I compliment you for the process that you're exploring. And I feel for you because it can't be done quick. I've dealt with government loans, government grants, and uh, the calendar is not a matter of weeks, it's a matter of months when you deal with them. Uh, but I commend you for exploring those opportunities when it looks like you're in a little red corner. And I, I think the EDA, my dealings with the EDA, as long as they see or see an honest effort displayed by you, which you're demonstrating with the exploration of this grant, Normally they are a little bit are, are tolerable, or they really get out of bounds when they don't see you doing anything and just sit still. You are at least really conscientiously exploring that additional funding, and I think the DA will bear, bear that in mind. I, I I think from a commissioner standpoint, uh, we need we need to be as cooperative and supportive as we can. There's a lot going into this project. Uh, they're making progress uh, on two fronts, uh, and that's financing and, and communicating with EDA. If we legislate a timetable to them, then we run the risk of EDA uh, coming back to them in a negative manner, and also the grant uh, not being given time to uh, come to fruition. What the magic answer is, I don't know, but I, I think that uh, they're being very honest and upfront with us on, on trying to approach this. And I think we should try from our end to be as considerate as we can also. conversation with our rep at EDA and we did get some clarification around that point as well and the requirement is not to have it's, it's more about closing out the loan I mean the grant and that's based on various requirements within the grant and, and they are not for the full scope we had phased the project with EDA because we knew the scope of our project was much larger than just what we would deal with with the EDA so we did clarify with them uh, the scope of 
Uh, I guess that my thought, my question would be, uh, and I, I, maybe I, I've gotten on you pretty well over the last few years, and I trust your judgment, um, but there's some what ifs in this scenario. Um, and I, I think y'all done a good job. Y'all worked hard on this project, and, and I'd like to see it come to fruition. The concern I've got is one is that the commercial loan takes longer than what EA, the representative of EA, is still comfortable with. Or if somebody else places an order and pushes y'all back and, and we and he doesn't feel comfortable with the date, we'll push back back with it. Would it be possible for us to have a plan B in place so that if one of those things happens? that we can have a museum open there by the deadline that we've got placed on us by EDA uh, to have some exhibits there to be open uh, and have that as a, a plan B. If these other things fell through because if not, what we're gonna end up with is an EDA or a grant that we've got to pay back um, that's gonna be expensive. Um, Mr. Paul, I, I promise you I'll spend a lot of sleepless nights Trying to figure no, that out. Okay, Honestly, trying to figure that out. Uh, as, as I explained last time, there's so much of it that's just tied together in these in these life pieces that you, you just can't you can't say we'll just go do this part. Now I could do possibly the change in the exhibit and get it open, but that would be nothing downstairs. We couldn't say the museum's open. I understand. I'm talking about to meet the requirements of the. EDA grant that's out there. That's why his question is. is well, let me say one happen? thing about the grant, and I say just one thing about the EDA grant. Uh, it's possible we might get where we could say we could close the grant out, and they still want to have an opening date. They still want to know a date, even if we close it out today. They still want to know a date. But we could possibly close it out, and then there'd be no risk with the grant. Okay? Here is the issue with the grant there is still. The grant was for one million five hundred forty-three thousand dollars. To date, we have collected a million fourteen thousand dollars from that. So there's still a little over five hundred thousand out there that we're counting on. If we close the grant, and, and to close the grant, part of the grant has uh, uh, exhibit fabrication in it. And that's what I'm needing the money to finish is exhibit fabrication. So for if we go ahead and close without getting the money for the exhibit fabrication from them. I, I got to find another five hundred and forty thousand dollars that's it. I won't be able to play. So if we close the grant and they thought they might let us close it today if we pushed it, okay? I think they'd probably just like to see us sign off on it. But I'd lose five hundred and forty thousand dollars. So that's part of the dilemma is if the grant, the, since it's on a 50-50, just renovation would not get a million and a half dollars. We spent $2.2 million renovating the building, a little over that, okay? And then to get it up to the, the $3 million that we turned in to, to get the match of one and a half, we had to put exhibit fabrication in there, and that's the part we're missing right now, the exhibit fabrication. And $1.2 million dollars $1.3 million wouldn't get the fabrication done? Because we've got, we've committed. Well, we, well, let me make sure you understand that I'm honoring what I believe to be the last time I was here. And that is, we don't spend any of the money that we're borrowing against pledges until we have secured an outside law. Is that, that right? That, that, was, that, was, that was my understanding where we were discussing that was right. that it couldn't be open without having the additional money from the commercial office. We, we, don't, we cannot finish it without having that money. And, and we don't think so we can one, open without finishing. So $1.2 million wouldn't have. The, the $500,000 still left in grant money and the, the, the pledge money that you already received. I'm sorry, the $500,000, Commissioner uh, Paul, Still goes against renovation. Oh, I see. Okay. That's not for exhibit. That still goes against renovation. Mr. Chair, okay. question. Uh, do the, 
when you, if you secure the other lost ship, then that money that you secure basically will assure you a loan. Is that correct? They supply you the necessary funds that you need. Yes. So I ask the set question. You're talking about six to eight weeks. Probably you will have an answer. Most likely on that other loan. Do we eliminate a what if? With EDA, uh, I think I know EDA that as long as they know you're processing the loan, processing the loan is fine for that grant. Do we eliminate a what if with EDA if we wait and just see what happens with this loan? If you get the loan, you fulfill what EDA is looking for, correct? If you got the funds to finish the project, you get the loan. That's the question I would ask. The only thing we don't know for sure is that our conversation today, and, and, and he is he is considering, he's going to come back to us, hopefully tomorrow, and he may come back and say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to give you consideration, but by this date, you give me a date. And if that's less than six weeks, you can see we're all going to have some more sleep this night. But I think, I, 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 maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I think in dealing with those people, if, if, if you laid the line out to them, I have a hard time believing that he will give you a hard, fast date that will be earlier than the six to eight weeks. I, 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 hope, I hope that's, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping that's what he comes back with. Right. Because he seems to be fair. He's worked with us on a couple other <laughs> things. Uh, but. But he just he just wants to see us. But I ask, you know, I ask the commissioner. My question is, do we eliminate the what if if we give them the time to to, to see if they can secure that loan? So I think that's what the question is wrong. Where the point we're here tonight is that the hour reason says they have to give them the time to secure it. What we are trying to vote on now is is because arbitrary put a date out there. Tell you, commissioners, if, if I sleep at night, you will not be on the hook for that. Somehow or another, we're gonna we're gonna take care of this. Okay. We're gonna do something. We have to go there and put some buggies running around in the place. Okay. We're, we're, we're <laughs> but, but I don't. But, but please understand, if we open that way, we will have failed you, and we will have not done what we told you we'd do, and that's the quality. So we understand. This is going back, and Commissioner Oldwood, I, I take the question, and I appreciate what you're, what you're mentioning. If we push back six weeks, that's mid-March, the deadline for the grant is April, uh, remember what day in April? Uh, April 7th. April 7th. If, and the reason why I'm asking for a plan B, and, and I understand you saying now, plan B, you know, uh, <coughs> the reason why I'm asking about a plan B is because if, we do, if the commercial loan fails, if they don't get the commercial loan, and we're at the middle of March, and we're scrambling between the middle of March and the first week in April to try to open up, um, and that's not a whole lot of time. Uh, would it make sense to, and, and I know your hands are full now, y'all got a lot on your plate, but find a plan B, something that, if this don't work, if the loan doesn't go through, we're going to be able to satisfy that grant requirement so that we're not on the hood. And yes. So, you, so yeah. you can sleep at night. We'll take a look at that. But, but quite honestly, it, it, we wouldn't 
that much to say. But we'll take a look at it. That's our problem. Is our problem is, is, is we've done we've done phases, we've done pieces, and we had money. That's been our whole problem. Is is you know, obviously we didn't have all the money up front. We'd have been open a year ago. But it's been, we've been having pieces, and we're still continuing. If we get money aside from anything that we've committed to pay you back with, we're we're giving orders. But we're 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 to the point where we got to give a final order because it's just just so tied together uh, that we can't we can't finish without doing that. So another question. Uh, to sort of uh, get back on what Commissioner Paul was saying, do we look at possibly taking care of the lease situation and and saying, okay, we we will um, typically approve one of the two and ask for progress report from them, them how they're doing on the other along every couple of weeks, so we'll know exactly what's going on. Yeah, that would that would have been our proposal. Uh, we would have come back to you when we got that date and said we'd like to extend uh, to, to that day. I think we can close the grant. Uh, they do want to. They, they, there is a stipulation there that we have to have something open. Okay. But I think we we have to before we before any, before we would allow the county to get into a buy and be embarrassed and have to pay back money. We'll close that grant one way or another. For whatever amount we got. Whatever amount we got. I will not put you in that position. Never intended. Never implied. I'll put you in that position. I'd like to see. It. Um, we were negotiating the lease for the tent five years ago. Uh, those of y'all that have a patient, and maybe those of y'all that have a patient, the, the lease down to the building had been closed and locked for a number of months. And we put that date in there as just a target date. That was before we did our first research. We did all our research and got started on our fundraising right about the time, the 08, the March of 08. So we did not have. Uh, we have been told by the state and museum that we've been kind of slow time that we could take seven years to open. And you know what? We got down to August. We had lightning and time slow time. It is 
is not. But we found out medium time really is low time. So when we did the 60 bed, 60 months in there, we did it as a way to keep moving to make sure that whatever organization the commissioner wanted to make sure whatever organization took over did have a finite date. And what have we accomplished to date? I mean, gosh, we've gotten within 10 percent, we've gotten five million nine hundred thousand dollars in those five years. We've got premier people. Uh, uh, one of our people um, in Atlanta, George, who travels the country for uh, organizations like this, said, "You all have been blue chips all the way." Be proud of your work. You work so hard. Open it the way you plan to do it, and it just took a little bit longer. So, in the 60 month scheme, a couple more months, we're all good. I mean, the EDA is good. We're having we have, we have good dialogue with these people. They recognize us for our good work. We have good things on the horizon for Cleveland County, and we just thank you for your cooperation. But since I, my name was signed on that lease back all those years ago, <laughs> I just want to clarify that that's why the time limit was put put in there. Because the county wanted to make sure the building had been sit, sitting empty and had been non functional for so many years, they wanted to have the opportunity to terminate it. And right now we're almost there. So that's where that part came from that 60 months. So thank you for your consideration for adjusting that, those months. Thank you. I have one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, on, uh, JJ, uh, uh, you have if we end up with plan B and if we open up by the date that, that EDA requirement, yes. you still could access that other, the remainder of the grant? Is that right? No, well, let's close the grant. If we, if, if we don't get it extended, we will officially have to close it and we will lose access to that. When we close the grant, we get no more money. Solid waste. 
and uh, any increases and in what have you, of course, we know it's going to impact the county. It's going to, the citizens, it's going to impact the, uh, the municipalities as well. But it is imperative that we start, we've got to get a ball rolling down the hill because in 2010, we were asking in 2011 and 12 to start raising these fees. And for the last few years, uh, we, we've not done that. So when, when municipal set up their fee schedule, it, it was pretty aggressive. They, they were really wanted to get the money from the, and, and the enterprise fund pretty quick. And so we, we did meet our, our obligations of even implementing the fund. So what I've come up with is on the second sheet, if you will. I came up with what I feel like. I talked to Wayne and Wayne. He says, Sam, you're not going to get all, you're not going to get the money we need as quick as we need it up front. But I'm like, well, he lives in a world and we live in a world. So what I'm proposing is to go from seven, just to raise uh, in next year's budget, when I present the budget to you, is raise the household fee by 24%. And with that said, on this third sheet, let's go to the third sheet, you can see how I broke it down for what it's going to cost the citizen in the town. So a, a person that has garbage collection uh, is bringing their garbage to the recycling center for disposal and recycling. It's going to be a twelve dollars. It's going to be one dollar a month. Those people that's got homestead exemptions, uh, the seven fifty is going to be a dollar eighty cents in that year. Is all that's going to be increased. So what what my plans are is to, to get this ball, uh, ball rolling. Is to ask for a twenty four percent increase this coming year, and skip three years, ask for twelve percent. Skip three years, ask for six percent. And, and, and on and on. I, I don't think it's feasible to think that we need to raise the fees to the, to the cities or to our businesses all at one time. So I want to I want to put it over a 12 year period instead of a three or four year period. That's on the uh, that's on the household fee. So on that second sheet, you can also see that. To beat our obligations, I'm asking for the year 13, 14, I'm asking for a 15% increase in our tipping fee. And then skip three years, add another 15%, skip three years, ask for another 15%, and so on and so on. That's going to give us percent wise what municipal wanted us to have, but it's just going to take us longer to get there. And one thing that I want to do that we've not ever done because we've never had a schedule is every three years, you know, we came before you to talk about the 10 year solid waste management plan. I want to include this fee structure uh, in that plan. And that way, every three years, we're going to be looking at our plan, which all the municipalities are on board with. And we're going to evaluate these fees. We're going to look at the enterprise fund, see how it is, see what money we have in there for future construction and capping. And then we will make decisions every three years. What are we going to do the next year or the next three years in raising this fee? Or we're not going to raise the fee based on the amount of money that we would have in the, uh, the extra account for the enterprise fund. And, and in all fairness to the municipalities, if we're going to make this decision, we're going to have to make it fairly soon. I'll be presenting my uh, budget to the Board of Health. Municipalities are calling out, Sam, what's, what's your fees going to be next year? What's your fees going to be? Because they got to adjust their, uh, their budgets as well. Sam, just the commission, you were saying that once you're telling us about how you're going to help for it before you bring it back down. I'm going to present them exactly what I'm going to present you tonight. So you're not asking for a vote? No, sir, I'm, I'm just saying, we're, you know, I've talked to you guys, and I've talked to Eddie several times, and with Wayne, we just got to get on the schedule. I mean, you're, you're dealing with a multi million dollar business out there. Well, it's, it's no bull on taxes, that's on zero. But we're not asking for you to raise taxes to, to supplement our needs. We're going to have huge costs in the future uh, replacing equipment. 
it's just a big business. You own two landfills, you own nine centers, and you own a hauling business is what you do right now in Cleveland County. You have a big business in the solid waste world right now. And if we're going to continue to build landfills, and we're going to continue to cap landfills, uh, unless you privatize this facility, we've got to raise our money, and we've got to set it, set it back. No. I think well, when we when we first looked at this, we were trying to up this real quick, get some money in the key early. That doesn't mean it has to be done that way. It's done anyway. It just needs to be done. Something needs to be done. Uh, you need to go to landfill construction in the next seven, eight years. Right now, you might have closed that, not money that up there. You cover that cost along the long closure costs, the post closure costs for the down the road. Share of what that who's paying now needs to be bearing that share so that's not fall on people who are disposing waste three years down the road to have to put it on basically. Here I'm just looking at your household points. I'll just bring you an update on uh, some areas that we've been discussing in the past, which involves Class C and fire insurance districts. Um, the map that I've given you uh, is a little more detailed than what you've had in the past. This actually breaks down the tax value of the revenue, basically, that is drawn in from each one of those Class C areas to give you the idea of what amount of money those areas do generate on the recent fire tax. Um, and just to give you an example of the Columbia area, taxable amount of that that this brought back in is ten thousand five sixty nine. Uh, that's brought into the service district, which is 
public service district areas, including the one sixty one area for tax three cents on a hundred dollar property property tax evaluation. Um, as you can see there with these amounts, there's not enough money there in any one of these districts to build a fire station or much less to build a fire station. Um, to, to cover these areas, what is required is a fire station that we have discussed in the past, as well as two pieces of apparatus um, at a cost of approximately $300,000 per apparatus. So it's quite a costly adventure uh, to do that. Um, as far as the Toluca area, I will tell you that the Boston Fire Department has expressed an interest in the area. What they are wishing to do is to petition the folks that live in that area to see if they would be agreeable to have their property taxed at 10 cents on 100, which is 7 cents higher than the current rate that they're paying now. Um, that's one option that's available for that area. Um, also, on the 161 area, which is it's not highlighted on your map, but it's in the southern corner there. Your approach class 10 is this way. Um, the city of Kings Mountain is in the process of reviewing a contract that was submitted to them, uh, and I think that's in the hands of their attorney as we currently speak. Uh, so that is being addressed, it's being looked at. Uh, it's not resolved yet, by any means, but it is being, being looked at. And I'm sure most of you are still receiving phone calls from day to day on each one of these areas. I received one today this afternoon as a matter of fact on 161. A uh, gentleman had just now found out that his insurance has increased the cost of being just like 10. Uh, the Zion Church Road area, which is in the center of your map, we call the Mid County Class 10 area. Uh, we're in negotiations with Lawndale Fire Department to cover that area. Uh, we determined that they can actually get that within a five or six mile district. Uh, and I think it's a feasible option for us to look at. So we are in some discussion with them in regard to that district. Um, Waco, which is the 216 area, which is up to the right of your map. Um, the Waco Fire Department is looking at some options to relocate the fire station. If they do that, that's going to move them closer to that area as far as their coverage goes. And there, there is a possibility that they may be able to get those parcels within their six mile district if that construction does take place. But again, that's continued upon funding. Uh, if they find the money to do that or are awarded money in some fashion to do their construction, then obviously that would be enough. I guess when you're looking at this, talking about a 10 cent fire tax in that district, you can get them on my ass pretty good, but that's what, $10 on a $10,000 house? Yeah, so if you got a $30,000 house and you just uh, sell it for $300, would be paying more taxes than they would pay an interest. Yeah. 
check the equals in a circle and nobody checked it. But now with all the computers out, the insurance can look, hey man, this guy's been getting it. It's not that they're going up on it. So a lot of them had not been painted and should have been painted in the past. They just got by with it. Except the new development out in probably some areas. A lot of a lot of the a lot of the things that may have been done may not have been intentional, uh, but I, I I can't face the fact that, that, that the the cost of insurance uh, goes up tremendously, and, and it's not necessarily just on the higher end houses. I mean, it's the average house. Yeah, you know, they get they get the uh, pretty good jump too. So I appreciate your work as far as trying to get these areas covered, bringing them to our attention, keeping. I'm kind of concerned that it's taken so long for the York Road. I know that y'all done everything that you can do to get it, get it to the point that it's at. Um, I don't know if there's anything we can do to kind of urge that along. I'm sure would be um, helpful in, in these other areas as well. Try to work on those. So Lawndale may be able to cover um, the Zion Church Road area without having to do any kind of construction or anything. That's correct. That'd be, the okay. that would be awesome. And then if, if Waco, if Waco in the next year or so builds a new facility, this old bureau up on uh, 216 be taken care of, but it may, it may knock somebody out on the other side. Well, cause an adjustment on that end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we're going to be okay with that because we can't cover that swimming line. Right, really swim right, right. Okay. And, and really, the offer of hands what we're really looking at. But uh, I had talked to Bethany Park Park last week. They proposed putting a truck, a king mountain, with the liability thing, and I think that's what their attorney's looking at is, is the fact that the liability, if we're out of town and the fire happens, of course we do. And one of the, I guess, scenarios they looked at, do they go with them and come together? Right. Their right. first priority would be the city of King's Mountain. That's not the way the contract was written. Yeah, and that's what the lawyer's looking at. Very on the remainder of these these fire districts too, very or the, the areas that are fire district protection plans being discussed. They're all uh, adjoining other neighboring counties. Um, except, is, is for there, except for the center, and you said that might be taken care of. Is there is there any more progression as far as talking with neighboring? County fire departments. The crime and audit fire department would talk to, and at the current tax rate, they would only be two in the 216. Uh, I think they would have to put a substantial tax increase, uh, seven tenths, I want to think, of the figure that was used. So that would be a point ten increase on those residents if they chose to do that. Um, I don't think it's one of the options that they're looking at, trying to increase the tax. But uh, the offer was made, and I think that they will probably have to come back to us. They would do it for seven years. Have we talked with the other ones as well? The other uh, ones, areas? As, far as, as far as the area down in Boiler Springs, um, the best of my recollection, there's nothing in there that they're talking to anyone. It's just that the, uh, in the upper left part of there is where the tax amount is 981. That's on the mountain. There's nothing there. It's like one house. Yeah, it's, it's one little house. Um, There's no access anyway. No. No. Now, as far as the Luca Class 10, if it, we're looking at Burke, Springfield, and the problem is all coming together out there. Um, I don't believe, and I'll have to double check, but I don't believe any of those departments can get through it within five or six months. 
up there and then um, uh, we would go film it here. And then. When you had to go back to the I was not going to be about to the couch, did you think? Well, one thing about it too, you start one, you're going to have one all along. So if you keep going, you're going to be increasing the taxes. So that's what we got to decide. If you're going to start one, you go from all of them, not just one. Because the way the money is divided, just because taxation in that particular Yala area, there's a formula that you get to get the money. So if, if you're going to start, you say, okay, you get all the money there, then one of the other ones is heavy, dense, and plot to get with houses. Why don't we get all the money in that area? And that, that's what the formula is set up for, to provide funding for all the fire departments rather than the one that's got the, uh, the most real estate in it. sure how uh, detailed our vendor can get on assigning to specific areas, but I can certainly look into it for you. I mean, that would be a way that the city was taking that anyway, put this little notice in there that uh, you need to contact The inserts that we uh, we have been in the past are, are not real expensive, so that's something that you want to look into. Mm -hmm. Work with it on. Um, any, any comments on that? Questions? I don't know where that is. Uh, word of mouth or it's a matter of us bringing water around and telling the city of Well, I, I think you.
across in our area. Um, that they would be able to recruit some additional manpower, I'm sure, from that area. Uh, I think that's what Bethany and what I have put together is that their membership zone doesn't have to recruit people. There are, there are ways. 
ways I, I think to do it in house, even without adding staff, looking at, at some departments that are not 100% utilized. But still, again, that's time spent. And whether you want to take that on and, and commit to yeah. make that commitment. More than by you, so we're supposed to open that town to fix it up. Mm -hmm. And some of the other departments are, are busy and when we get to that point, then. If we don't do something on a regular basis going on, on contract, then we wind up with some of these other things that we wind up putting the bill. We're looking at, did you say when Boyle Springs wound out our own maybe six cases a year? And they're going to, and the, the municipalities are willing to pay us to handle that to compensate, to compensate for the time? They said it was. The option is is they can hire somebody else to do it, uh, a private company to do it. Uh, the likelihood of being able to contract that out without the county joining in is, is pretty slim. Um, I think that the heat consultant overrides thermal will the volume of the county to come with that. You don't see an issue with us doing it in house with the staff that you got now. Based on the if the, if they if the load increased, would you come back and revisit this? Later with this, right? There's nothing saying we're signing up for an indefinite contract with these. Yeah, the problem is coming up with you know how much you will charge these municipalities for that service. It, it could be surveyed on a case by case basis if you know what it, you know the man hours it takes. You know the advertising it takes, and you know the meetings you're going to have to make. I think it, you should be able to sit down and say, "Okay, this is what it costs me each time I have a minimum housing code across the county for my time and expenses, and whatever that is, they should be willing to pay at least what it costs us for a case." You're looking at at least you know minimum of 150 dollars. Uh, if we can't find the person and do two legal ads. You're looking at 200, 400 on cost of assets, 550. Typical for uh, an absentee owner that's difficult to find. So that, that gives you kind of a range of 150 to 550 uh, per case. Do your time because I'm not good. Do you, you do stop time or get paid extra? No. So you don't get nothing? <laughs> <laughs> just regular day. <laughs> and we may be farm that out to maybe get the building inspectors to do more of that than they're doing now. Yeah. Since it's kind of slowed down in there. There's a lot of questions out there. I like numbers to look at. I would do it even the number of hours. Like I say, you, you, if you do a minimum housing, you, you've got to attend, somebody's got to attend the meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe you, you know, yeah. these other guys, I know these other guys, if they stay extra, they get caught down on something, and that, that builds up in cost in the long run. So we should be reimbursed for anything we've got to pay over a period of time. I, I'd like to see a, a total number of what it would cost if you paid someone to do so this. Number, it, number of hours. Yeah.
might be able to put the song together pretty quick before we could do a, I guess a temporary agreement to come back with some numbers and we accept it and then they sign off on it and we take care of it. Yeah, I can come back here next week and go back. And I've got a sound.